Hi everyone. Right, I'm back today with the video. I was going to do it as a live, but actually I'm thinking it might take more than 30 minutes and my streaming service won't let me do more than 30 minutes. So I'm going to do it as a recorded video, but if you have any questions, by all means, pop them down in the comments and I will answer them. So what we're doing today is... Do, 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 do. I'm going to do the other side of this shoe. Okay, so I had lots and lots of comments and questions on another shoe that I decorated a while ago but this one I've just done this half of this morning and I thought I'll do the video before I do the other half so this one's naked and we want to decorate it like this so the idea with this is that it's an old shoe that is either scuffed up maybe you didn't like the original color uh, maybe they didn't fit and you're thinking actually something like bookends maybe instead you could fill it with a bag of rice to weigh it down uh, or a bag of sand or maybe you just want to jazz up a nice really comfortable pair of shoes and use that instead so um, with this I'm going to do it as quickly as possible for you um, but on the other hand I don't want to miss anything out so um, like I say leave comments for me if you want to and I will get back to you as soon as possible if I have lots and lots of comments and people really want me to do this live so they can ask as I'm doing it um, I'll do that let me know maybe another time I'll do one that's not quite so dark and grungy maybe another time we can do one that's perhaps um, pretty so whites uh, peaches pinks purples maybe something like that this is my favorite colors the blues and teals and then with the dark and grungy as well now if I just flip you to the other view so you can see what I'm doing there we go so you can see there you can really see how half of this is done and half isn't so the first thing I did is I spray painted this shoe. Now originally it was red as you can see just on the inside there where I didn't do a very good job but at the end of the day your foot's going to be in there. You can absolutely wear these. That's not a problem at all. You can wear these out and about. The only thing I'd suggest is if you look at it from above is around the bottom here you don't have too much sticking out on the inside of the shoe because on the inside that is where you're going to maybe catch with the other foot so just be wary of keeping this without too much sticking out so we've got things like wing nuts on here uh, as long as they're not too big they'll be fine but um, try to keep it as flat as possible and then you can use that I mean what we're going to do is make sure nothing comes up too much or certainly not inwards of this lip here it can come upwards you see I've got a metal wing there if we look at it on the other side you can see the metal wing here does overlap the edge of the shoe but it's not coming inwards so if you were to put your foot in there it's still going to fit okay so yeah you wear these out and about people are going to wonder where you got them from and you have that pleasure in saying actually I made them so I've got a little bit of floral sprouting out here now the idea is that this is um, a bit of a personality with this shoe so this is your dark your not so much sinister maybe sinister but um yeah this is me really quite shy um always working always thinking on the surface it's very hard to get through but actually on the inside i love light flowery things pretty things um, yeah so it's a bit like revealing what you really like inside on the alternative you could flip this around you could actually do it so that the outside the main part of the shoe is all pale colors and light and flowery and on the inside you have the cogs just being unzipped and revealing in fact I don't know how well you can see that that's actually a zip there just here that's actually a zip that's running all the way from the bottom here all the way around to the top edge and I've stopped at this center point here because this is where I'm going to come up to now and down the middle I've got an extra embellishment to add there so spray painted that now I used um, a, a, it's a spray paint that I just got from a DIY store you see it's not too shiny either it's a matte one because I didn't want the gloss to affect with the glue and essential for this is absolutely a hot glue gun now mine only reaches this far in so every now and then you might see me gluing over here but um, that's because that won't fit heat tool is quite handy if you're in a hurry and you don't want to leave things to dry we're going to be working with gesso so if you can just give that a quick blast with any layers and that will mean you can carry on straight away so they're an essential and then it's your embellishments really so i've got here an old zip and i actually cut up a handbag for this um it was an old handbag it was this cream color it was really grotty really 
dark and dingy it had marks in it that wouldn't clean up so i thought right i'm going to take the zip out at least and i'll probably to be honest get rid of the rest of it as well um so i had two lengths like this so um i'll be using that for my zip it doesn't matter what color the zip is really because you can paint it you can add different colors to it so as long as you've got those teeth there my absolute favorite zip to work with which is one i'd need to go and buy because i didn't have one to hand is um if i'm doing a black base it would be the black fabric and then the teeth would be that those really big silver ones really quite chunky ones so a heavy in industrial heavy weight zip is great for this because it really shows up and then if i just show you over here what i've also got is this is my metal embellishments now there's all sorts here what i've also got included as you can see here are nuts and bolts now if you go to a diy store you're going to get packets of wing nuts packets of nuts and bolts for a pound two pounds really really inexpensive grab those but on the other hand in here i've also got embellishments that that were a lot more money so i've got some that were Tim Holtz, Ingrid Bohm, all sorts in there, Prima, um, just loads and loads that some that cost a little bit more money, but I still haven't used them because they're always too special to use. Well, now's the time to sort of bring them out and start using them. Doesn't matter about the colour of the metal you're using either because we're going to go over all of it. What we're looking for is the texture. If you've got anything else that adds texture. So uh, I've got rock salt I could use. I've got, um, if you've got texture paste. If you've got old coins as well that you can't any longer use. Um, what else have we got? Buttons, things like that. Anything that's, that adds texture. You can use, absolutely use all of those. So I've got my base here. Let's get started. Now for the inside here, I wanted some colour inside of that zip just in case any of the flowers don't show up. OK, so in case they've got rather not show up um, in, in case there's gaps and you can't see. So what I'm going to do is just cut a triangle. Now you can lay this over your shoe where you want it to be and draw roughly or give yourself a bit of a guide as to how how long you want this but it does matter what length your zip is so if i cut my zip in half here there we go and then i'm just going to trim these down as well so i'm trimming the fabric that's on the zip down by about half the width you can leave it if you've got a big enough area to stick it to but that would be overhanging now this is a very messy project okay I'm not going to lie that you're not going to stay clean you can see by my fingers today from doing the first one and I have given them a bit of a wipe with a wet wipe um, you're going to get messy so put a mat down um, make sure you've got time as well if, if you're rushing this and you're trying to do layers without letting the first one dry first um, you're going to end up in all sorts of mess um, I've just thrown half my zip out there we go there's the two pieces now look at the length of these so what we're going to have is the fabric at the top edge of the shoe here and coming from the middle so if I lay this down along the top edge of the shoe then I can put a little mark with my nail but I can almost scratch away at the paint there so I know that's the length of my zip and then this one should be very very similar except you're stretching it a bit far, further open so it might not go quite as far but yeah that will fit perfectly so what I want to do is make sure that I've got a piece of fabric that will roughly fit that so if I put that on let's do this smooth edge let's see the smooth edge there isn't a smooth edge with this hessian really uh, can be any fabric as well it could be a floral or something like that could be paper too could be a book page so I'm laying that on there. So if I turn my shoe around, this corner is where I scratched into that paint. I'm just going to trim down here. That's how long I need it. Put that to the side. And then I want it to be, if I show you upside down what I'm doing, I want it to match this zip so this zip opens comes open to the widest point and then closes back down this side so I'm just going to snip into it here and then continue snipping from there back to that point at the end 
okay so I've got a triangle there it's not a big triangle but it's enough so that if you see through your flowers you're not going to see the black you're going to see more color that's why I say it can be absolutely any color you like I just neaten these edges up and then I'm going to stick this with hot glue so I'm going to start at the end here to make sure that the two ends will line up glue that down be very careful with hot glue <laughs> it's hot it's very very hot and then just pull this over pull this over so a lot of the gluing I can glue the embellishments first and then stick it to the shoe more in shot of the camera but with this I'm actually gluing onto the shoe first because I can see where I want it to go there and then this lip under here I'm going to run some glue under there as well there we go now it would be really good fun to have these as uh, like I say bookends or just a display maybe you could fix it so you could actually put something store something in there shame it's not big enough for a wine bottle really so I've got my hessian on there now I need to add my zips like I say the zip color does not matter at the moment okay what I'm looking at is just the texture of the teeth so starting again this top end making sure that it's the fabric side of the zip that's just running along the edge of the shoe here I love doing this and if you're worried about your shoes at home you want to have a go but you don't want to be ruining a pair of your shoes at home well you're not ruining it you're making them better but I know I do understand the, how it can be nerve-wracking doing this to something go to the charity shop um, if you're watching in America go to the thrift shop just pick up a really old pair car boot sales 50p a pound something like that you don't even need a matching pair just one <laughs> if, if someone's randomly shilling, selling one shoe which I doubt but you never know you can find all sorts nowadays just one shoe is enough so I'm going to start at the heel end again with this zip making sure that the zip teeth are facing inwards and then I'm going to run that back down so it comes to a point okay it's very different to what I usually do there's very little paper involved at all here today but it makes a nice change and you know what those techniques here you could transform to your paper crafting if you're usually a scrapbooker or a card maker rather than anything else there's no reason why you can't use all of these techniques onto cards as well I mean to make a card that look like that just do it onto a piece of thin chipboard or grey board or something like that absolutely go for it right so uh, now we need to start adding embellishments so we want to put the flowers in here first now I've got an assortment of flowers I've got some smaller ones and I've got some larger ones I've also got a bit of a stem here that's going to uh, just be peeking out from outside so sort of uh, what's the word protruding out from the cluster of flowers so cut my stems down as well so save that one I've got the smaller ones put the smaller ones aside as well so the smaller ones are going to sit um, in the smaller area and obviously get bigger and bigger so if I start the outside here I need to fill in the gaps where I stopped from the other half and come all the way around so I've got blues and teals but any colors are absolutely fine just take those stems off if you don't want to cut the stems off that's absolutely fine what you could do instead is give them a twirl with the pokey tool so I'm going to put this big blue flower in the middle and what that's doing is just concealing that join there okay and then we'll continue round starting with the bigger teal flowers what you can do with paper flowers don't forget you can cut them up you can cut them in half you can cut them into quarters you can take individual petals off of them as well so I don't want this to perfectly match what I've got going on on the other side though um, I want it to be coordinating but if it's a, exactly identical symmetrical it's not going to look natural at all so I'm going to put these now as I'm placing them 
I like to make sure that um, the zip, if I can, is just coming out over the flowers, or they're not going over over the zip rather. So it does look as if they're growing from inside the zip. Um, here I've cut one of these flowers in half with a good strong pair of scissors. There's a piece of, um, sort of polystyrene or something in there. So uh, it's stronger than polystyrene actually. I'm not sure what that was. But that I've cut open and then I can place that inside. So like I say, it does look like it's coming out from the uh, zip there. There we go, lift that up. You see how this wouldn't, this is already 15 minutes into this video, so there's no way half an hour would have been enough. Now I'm going to fill in the gaps with other florals. Okay, so I've got other blues, whites, teals, and such like, but just again making sure that whatever I put in there, I've got nothing coming over the zip until this one. So this is the one I do want coming over. So this one, um, doesn't really matter which way you put it. I think I want it coming backwards. I'm going to pop that one in there and have it so it is coming out. So just arrange these. Oh, I think you lost me for a moment there. There we go. All right, so oh, pop some glue in there and secure that in. Even if you're using hot glue, you can't make a mistake because everything's reversible. Well, the paint's probably not quite as reversible, but most things are reversible because at the end of the day, hot glue, if you leave it to dry, cool, you can pick it off. Um, or you can always warm it up and readjust as well with a heat gun. That's why I say be careful with your heat gun when you're drying the gesso because you don't want to melt your glue. Um, but if you do put something down and think, oh, that's really not right, warm it up a little bit with the heat gun, you can carry on. So let's see. I've got this gorgeous teal flower here. It's almost too good to use. It doesn't need trimming. Pop this one on in there. And now I need to get down to my smaller flowers because I'm getting right into the closed, closed part of the zip. So I've got much smaller ones here now. Pop this on. So just a little bit, we don't need too much glue. Pop that in there. And a tiny little teal one I've got here. Well, I better put this white one in first actually. In there. I'm just going to move my chair beside me because that's squeaking. And lastly, I'm going to put this little teal one. Actually, I'm going to bring that up and into this little gap in here. There we go. So we have filled that with flowers. Okay, looking good already. Even if you were to just paint the edges of that zip, that would be a nice shoe. And you can absolutely do that. There's no reason for you to have to go any further if you're not as keen on the steampunk look. But we are we want to carry on so put my flowers to the side now just have a look round the back actually just make sure actually i've got a little bit of a gap here okay just under there just need to fill that in so let's see i've got a nice blue flower that will fit in that gap perfectly just double check it's not everything just have a look around before you put anything away if you're good and put things away as you go there we go, filled in that gap. So now I've got flowers all the way around. Okay, so let's pop these out of the way. And go up there. Sweep this down because you'll find as you work, you'll get little strings and blobs of hot glue everywhere. And they drive me mad. They really do. So now the embellishments. Now all we're going to do is take these metal embellishments and we're going to start gluing. Um, I'm leaving a gap here because I have got a large key that I'm going to put down the centre. So I'm going to start around here first of all. So let me see. Now these are really, 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 really useful. These were just sort of some mesh metal washers. I think I paid about 69p, something like that for those um, at a DIY shop. So it really was nothing. I'm just layering up all these different metal pieces um, now there are some that I do want to position 
so this one I've actually got two of the same wings so that wing there I was thinking this was the opposite of it but it's actually identical to it so it's going to have to come in a little differently it's not going to quite look the same but do you know what no one is going to be able to see both sides of your shoe at the same time I'm wondering if I can just position that shoe like that so you can see what I'm doing uh, I've got a bolt here now bolts are brilliant they fill up quite a lot of space as well and they just look really industrial um, I have these wing nuts as well I think these are fantastic again really inexpensive so pop that on the end there and I'm just going to work my way around the entire shoe uh, filling in ga any gaps so I'm going to put a slightly larger piece um, that is quite large I do change my mind a lot as well so I've got this metal piece here and it's got a hook on it I want to remove that piece of metal there and put that on there now because this has got a quite a flat smooth area I'm also going to put something else in there oh I like this so this one says jeans I've had this years but as usual it's too good to use so not now I'm using it um, what else have I got all sorts so much smaller washers as well smaller metal washers doesn't always have to be really big ones absolutely use smaller ones too so squeeze those in I've got elements such as old metal um, oh I wanted to show you this actually um, for the very end of the zip which I'll put on as one of the last pieces I've got a little light bulb now these are old light bulbs um, I don't know if you can still get them I think they were prima marketing so if you've got any of those hanging around you can use those this is really cool don't know what it is it was some sort of fixing do you know things like picture big picture hooks as well things like this you can put those on there I wonder where that would fit actually We'll look at that in a moment so just any metal and it doesn't even have to be metal if you've got plastic we can paint it to make it look like metal so coming down the edge of the zip I said so just don't go too far to the bottom I'm not going to go all the way down to here I'm just going to come round most of the way and um, what else have I got another bolt here Oh, caught my finger with hot glue. Do not swear, do not swear. As if I ever swear anyway. Um, that one on the front there, so that's as far down as I'd be happy to go there. Um, because the shoe does bend round and underneath a little bit anyway, so you don't want to be catching anything. Um, what else have I got? The hardest thing is actually choosing what to put on when you've got so many a lot of things I've got are these metal they're actually old metal buttons which are really cool because they've got a lot of like that that's got a lot of texture in it oh, and I've also got these metal letters I couldn't even tell you where they come from now no idea but they were an embellishment I had like a scrapbooking embellishment so let's put a few metal letters on they don't have to mean anything they can even be upside down again we're just looking for texture put a little e there I think I have a lot of D's or P's or B's or whatever they are here. Yeah, there's a, oh no, it's a Y. Y, that's a perfect letter to use for this. Why would you do this to a shoe? There we go. And if you find an embellishment, you think, oh, I'd like to use that. There's no reason why you can't skip ahead and, and use it further up in the shoe. Um... I used one of these one of those memories this has memories on it so it was obviously a scrapbooking embellishment at some point I've also still got some paper on there doesn't matter glue it on so you can see I've got gaps in there not a problem at all I'm filling these gaps 
the W there. Um, this is an unusual one. I've got a, I've got this one. I've also got another one in here somewhere. Or oh, I've got a few of them. So I've got a V. This V is quite cool actually. Oh, on oh, number five. Where did you go? Inside the shoe. And see how you get messy. Do you know what? Raid your husband's, your dad's, your granddad's garage, your brother's garage, whoever. Raid the garage. They'll love it. I'm sure you can find loads of bits for this in there. Um, paper clip. Paper clip's a good one because it's fairly flat, but you've got texture. Pop that in there. Don't worry about being able to see the glue either. Again, we will hide that. Now I've got some brads here that I shouldn't be doing it with these scissors, but I've got these brads that actually are looking like a screw head on top. So they've got the flathead screwdriver mark there. Phillips, isn't it? Or is Phillips the crosshead? Phillips is the crosshead, I think. I know very little about DIY. Clearly, um, oh, that's a good one. There we go. Got one of these sort of spiky looking cogs as well. Now, I'm not going to do too much to the heel. I'm just going to work my way around here. So hopefully you can see where I'm going. Balance on there, please. Balance. Um, I've got a key to go on the heel, but I want that to go on last because I don't want any paint on it. So on the heel, I'm going to um, just come down a very small amount with a few little embellishments. Um, wing nuts stick out quite far, so I don't think I'll be using those. Oh, look at this. The button, it's got like a, um, a crest on it. No idea again, no idea where it's come from. And even your local haberdashery might have lots of buttons. So put that one on there. Press that into the shoe as hard as I can while that dries. Um, now I think I'll have a little bit more coming down. Nearly done. I've got one of the, one of the Phillips ones, one of the crosshead ones. We've got jeans. Ow, 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 finger. There we go. Okay, so that is probably covered enough with the embellishments. Now it does look like a little bit of a mess at the minute. Granted, I'll give you that. But we're going to cover it over now. So I'm going to cover it over with black gesso. Now it doesn't have to be gesso at all. It can be um, just black paint. Absolutely. So uh, black acrylic paint would work fine. And I've got a brush. Now this brush is quite a stipply one. It's, it's quite coarse and short. So it can really get in amongst everything. Now we're not going for full coverage either. Uh, we're just going to brush over the majority of the metal. So with some dabbing, it's going to go over. And do you know what? It doesn't have to be black either. Whatever your base colour of your shoe is, I would recommend you go with that colour. And don't be too precise. Just go in. If you go too hard, you'll be able to uh, spot where you've got any uh, weaker glue or any areas that don't want to stick. So it doesn't matter if you don't go quite as gentle as you usually would when you're painting because that way you'll show up any flaws before you wear them or display them. Now I'm getting to the zip here, so I'm going to be avoiding the zip area as much as possible. So you're just dabbing in all different directions. Get as much as I can, but again, not being too precise with it. And this does dry very quickly. It is water-based, the same as acrylic paint would dry quickly. Now I need to hold this. Let's put it down. So let's get the embellishments. Now I'm not worried about the, the fabric of the zip. I do want that to be black anyway. What I am worried about is the actual zipper teeth. Um, I'd prefer to try and keep them from getting too much in the way of paint on them. The fabric of the zip I'm going to go over in a moment. So I'm going to get a much smaller brush, a detail brush, and fill that in because it really is quite hard otherwise to get that neatly. 
Okay, just dabbing in almost to the end. There we go. Okay. There, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that to the side for a moment. Just because I can't go off and wash this while you're watching, I'm going to wrap that in a wet wipe. That will keep that damp for a while until I get a chance to wet, uh, wipe it. Now I'm going to go in with a, a fine brush. Did I just put the lid on this? And what I'm going to do now is fill in the fabric at the top of the zip. Okay, there we go. So avoiding the teeth and actually it's quite nice because the teeth protrude a little bit. You can really get your brush just underneath them and get a nice neat edge quite easily. With this filling in that fabric and you'll notice you've still got a nice smooth line to the edge of the shoe. So wearing the shoe would not be uncomfortable at all. If I had better legs, I'd try the shoe on for you, but that's really not happening today. Nobody needs to see that. Maybe I'll get my daughter to try them on. My stepdaughter's got the same size shoes as me anyway, so she can um she could wear these. But I'd absolutely do you know what if you're going to a wedding, I'd love to wear something like this. Not the black, I'd I'd wear a lighter colour, but with all the flowers on, lots of uh, metal pieces, as in bright silver metals, some sparkles, some gems, some glitter. That would look gorgeous for a wedding. You could personalise it, personalise it, couldn't you? You could um, match the colours of the wedding. You could have all, all, all the bridesmaids in a similar colour. There's lots and lots of ways you can do this. And that's thinking about actually wearing them. And then you've got the options of not actually wearing them. Now... This gets a little bit fiddly down here because I'm going in amongst the embellishments rather than at the edge, but very much the same. Not too difficult to get in there because you've got a ridge. If you can actually see what I'm doing. I do get carried away sometimes, even when I'm filming. I forget that you're trying to see what I'm doing. And I just hold it so that I can see. There we go. getting in there so it doesn't take long at all and do you know what by the time you've done this a lot of your gesso on all your other embellishments will be dry this is sort of the stage where you start getting really messy because you're holding the wet areas whilst you're trying to do others so if you want to put it down just bend these flowers out the way as well don't want any paint on the flowers ideally if you can keep them clean it adds to the effect of having them nice and clean sprouting out from the dark grungy areas something i'm not too keen on the word grungy i don't know why it just sounds dirty and it's really not is it steampunk we like that word it's very similar okay so i've got my zip there all done oh have a look have a look at all the angles make sure you've got all the areas you want to i think i can get away with that there's a little bit around here there we go lovely so you can see already it's starting to come together so let's pop this inside my wet wipe as well i'm going to wash these when i've finished this video now, okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is apply some heat to this. Um, just using my heat gun and um, I'm holding it at a distance because I don't want to melt the glue that's holding everything. The gesso will dry ever so quickly, so I won't talk while I'm doing this because I don't know that you're going to be able to hear me, but I'll just whiz over it quickly, make sure everything's touch dry. Well, that was quick. Oh, hang on. 
that was quick <laughs> so you see actually it's now gone quite a matte we've got the metal on that side which I'll do in a moment but that's quite a matte color so now to add that detail I'm going to pick out the detail this is why it didn't matter what color your metal was because it's now all black and we're now going to pick it out with a gold gilding wax okay now be quite liberal with this um, oh look at that picking out the detail that is gorgeous brush along all of the cogs the buttons all the detail um, really make it pick out the edges of the cogs as well even something that's fairly flat if you brush around the edges you're going to get all that detail picked out look at that wing as well oh that's gorgeous um, this is probably the most the the most I'll ever use gilding wax on these pro these shoe projects and I'm also going to put the gilding wax actually on the top and bottom edge of the shoe as well just to tie everything in we don't want anything to look altered we want to look as if it's all made to be oh that crest I don't know if you can see that that crest that I've just done there I'm not sure how well my my camera at the top is actually focusing that lovely if you think anything's a bit too dark if you think oh I've just put a bit too much on there just you can go just get your paintbrush there we go back over it a little bit just tone it down slightly now I'm going to run gilding wax along the edge of the shoe not a lot just a little bit but that's still a bit damp on there so it might be easier to do that in a little while and along this bottom edge as well up here down the heel particularly down the inside of the heel there gorgeous right we're getting there not too far off now so next stage is a uh, gold paint and a fine paintbrush this is for the teeth now if I show you the difference so they are the teeth that we've got at the moment okay and that's what we're going to have you can see they're gold so I've got a gold acrylic paint here so um, oh this is a ranger one and I've got a very fine paintbrush and I'm going to put this on over the teeth now I've not worried too much about the bottom of the zip there because I've got that light bulb that I mentioned earlier to put over the top so I've left that clear I've got a few more embellishments to put over the top going on with a, in here with a very fine paintbrush because I don't want to catch anywhere else with this what might be nice is if you just brush over a few of the flowers with the gold as well if you want to to bring the gold in to the flowers particularly the lighter color ones but again completely optional have a play no one if I mean if you have a go at this and your friends have a go at this no one's is going to be exactly the same even if you try to follow everything I've done with all the same materials there will be variations okay that's the bottom zip done and come up to the top so I'm just going over the metal or plastic teeth depending on what sort of zip you have used this one was plastic teeth clearly wasn't a very expensive handbag um, hence I don't mind actually cutting it up and it was quite a few years old as well so if you like projects like this if you pop over so you might be viewing this on my blog or YouTube you might be viewing this on Facebook but I'm on all the social um, platforms just have a look for either Lou Collins or Lou Collins designs if you're struggling to find me um, I think there is there are a few other people who use these platforms called Lou Collins such a common name so try Lou Collins designs if need be and find me and don't forget to subscribe and then anything like this you'll be able to see when I first release it okay so pop this again into the wet wipe I'm just going to trim this because it's come a little bit loose and take my paintbrush there just touch that up a little a little bit of black 
there we go okay you see now we've got the gold zip I need to finish off the bottom which as I said I was going to use the light bulb let me check the other side so the light bulbs are facing upwards and it's just concealing that zip this is where hot glue is really handy because it's completely clear and it dries almost instantly so even if you're still a bit wet there that will hold there that's just covered that area up and I think lastly I just need to put on my key now this key I've already bent okay so <laughs> it took a little bit of doing but I did do it with my hands but I've bent it so that it will fit the silhouette the shape of the shoe there so I can glue this on now I'm going to be very careful because again hot glue and just just with the clear glue down the stem of the key avoiding my fingers and press this on it's very hard to get this as an absolutely perfect shape or contour of the shoe but it's as close as it's close enough there we go there perfect a little bit wet still but that will dry there we go so let's have a look at that then from the front here we go so this was the let me have a look this was the first one that we did and you see i actually spritzed in the flowers there a bit dark and um, i wasn't so happy with it but the side that we've just done i've kept open as in i've not spritzed them or anything i've not put any gilding wax on them or anything and there we go absolutely gorgeous and we've got the key down the back as well now i'll take some photos of that so you've got them for reference um what i would do with this now is i would take something like this this is just a hobby and craft sealer or um the other one i've got here is a project enamel clear enamel i would spritz that's nearly running out actually i would spritz this all over with that to help seal everything in including the flowers and yeah so that's that's really is as simple as it is it's just lots and lots of gluing of different elements and then you kind of brush all over with the same color to tie them all in so i'm now off to um, photograph this and then hopefully if you have any questions i can answer them do send them in and it might be questions that other people are thinking about as well so um i hope you enjoyed that thank you very much for watching